In a town? On a farm? In the suburbs? Well, no matter where you live, you are part of a vital web called a community. Within this community, we work, we live, and we enjoy life. One of the social forces that binds a modern community together is communication technology. Phones, television, radio, and today, many people are beginning to explore a new way to share vital community information using a computer. The concept is called community computing, and it is bringing the promise of the information age home to many citizens around the world. Community computing, or freenets as they are sometimes called, form a unique new medium, one that has many of the attributes of public radio and television combined with the interactive power of a personal computer. It's a low-cost way to bring local information to the members of an electronic community. Community computing is really having a meeting place, uh, a meeting place where members of the community can uh, exchange ideas, can share experiences, expertise, hopes and concerns, and we get to that meeting place using a computer and phone lines. Once their computer calls the central machine that we set up, uh, they've got access to a whole range of information and communication services. Uh, it ranges from uh, worldwide electronic mail services to information and communication features in, in areas such as education and government, uh, health and wellness, uh, local organizations, clubs and organizations and so forth, uh, all the way down to uh, just accessing information about what's going on at your kid's school or what's going on in your local uh, bowling league. Community computing is an idea born of the information age. For years, computer hobbyists have developed non-commercial, single-focused bulletin boards to share information with other like-minded individuals. Meanwhile, large commercial services like America Online and CompuServe have developed national information services with an almost unlimited capacity for news, sports, shopping, and fun. Community computing occupies a new middle ground. It's a low-cost, non-commercial service that meets local needs. For instance, consider Medina, Ohio, 50 miles outside of Cleveland. Medina is the county seat, and farming is an important part of the economy. Jim Copes, for instance, grows hay. He uses his computer to connect with his farm colleagues around the county. It's fun to come to the computer and kick it on, and the first thing I do is to see if anybody's in my mailbox because it's fun to see if there's any messages. And I like that because it's, it's hey, this guy wants to talk to me or he's, he wants to reply. It's a time saver. And what I mean by being a time saver is think of hopping in your truck, driving into town, which is 20 minutes away, finding the county agent or going to the library, whereas I could sit right here in my chair and I can scan volumes of information and what ifs and play out scenarios without leaving my home. Anytime you leave your facility, your business, it's costing you money. What it's doing is it's opened up the world to you. We're not just stuck on the back 40 uh, and we go in Saturday night to see everybody at the, the square dance anymore. It's not that way at all anymore. Freenets offer a community a powerful new way to exchange ideas and to communicate with one another. I really think there is something missing in in a lot of modern society. A hundred years ago there were communities, there were extended families, so people had a larger group that they were a part of and I think that's been lost and without I think really intending to this type of thing sprung up and filled a need that wasn't there because now there are it is a community. I think that's the most important thing about it. People can use the free net for different things but it's really the way people communicate with, with each other that's important. Probably one of the most popular areas is our community center where the kiosk is and people can just chat back and forth about all kinds of issues of the day. You had probably the most wide-ranging political discussion in town on the free net. Uh, the newspapers didn't carry anything like it. You didn't hear it on any local radio stations because there aren't any. No local TV stations because there aren't any. So you basically, only place you had it was on the free net. Uh, the best thing you could do to approximate that would be have everybody show up on town square at the gazebo and shout at the top of their lungs. In this online world, the only thing that they're judged by is 
the, the quality of what's in their head. And for a lot of people, this is enormously liberating. Nobody judges them because of uh, the kind of clothes that they are wearing or whether they're thin or, or fat or good looking or not good looking or all these kinds of extraneous things that we judge people on in normal day-to-day -day life. All of that washes out on a community computer system so that what you're left with is the quality of what's in your mind. And that's very powerful and very liberating. In Medina, the network is financially supported by the county hospital and two local libraries. Such support is typical of many emerging community computing networks because libraries and free nets share similar goals. The library is a real strong supporter of free and open access and I think that's where we really feel like the free net's mission and ours come together. Right now I'm trying to get on and it takes a while but once you get on you can talk to some real interesting people. These guys come in at 2.30 every day, and usually the same people, although we have, it, it rotates around, whoever gets in here first grabs it, but they basically keep them themselves entertained for the next hour or so, rotating around on accounts, chatting to people on the free net, uh, posting mail messages. I know, I know her. I know her. Oh, do you? They're learning how menus work, they're learning how discussion groups work, they're learning how to trace a thread and the history of a message. There are a lot of techniques that they're going to be able to use later. Okay, okay, okay. Because he seems to want to talk to you pretty bad. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be Besides offering communication services and chat lines, helpful information on a network is provided by local volunteers who contribute their expertise to a special interest group. SIGs are like visiting a small specialty shop along the main street. I'm at the history, in one of the history SIG apps, so I post trivia questions for the students and, and encourage them to post questions. I'm an assistant SIG op in the IBM and Compatibles area of the Medina Freener. There's four of us. Uh, we all cooperate on uh, watching over the area to make sure posts stay within guidelines and things are done according to procedures. Even the local paramedics decided they would get involved. The people that access it, they may not call you on the phone to ask you a question, but on a computer, They'll ask you whatever's on your mind, and they know that we're going to answer them and give them a forthright answer. It established a community relationship there that we wouldn't have otherwise, maybe. The Medina Freenet has a very local flavor to it. It is very much a, a small town feel, and as the community is getting larger, the number of people on the Freenet is getting larger, and on the one hand, we really like that because we want to share the information that we have. We want to look at ourselves as being successful. On the other hand, sometimes there's that fear that when you become too big, you might become too impersonal. It hasn't happened, I don't think, to either the community or the free net. And I think there are reasons for that. I think people that move here move here because they like the small town feel. So they're trying to preserve that. And in the same way, the Freenet is preserving its, its small town uh, community flavor. Medina is just one among hundreds of cities and towns that are discovering what this resource can do for them. In Los Angeles, the Tarzana Regional Medical Center has become one of the key sponsors of the Freenet. Getting the network online has been the dream of its founder and president, Dr. Avram Blooming. Medina, Ohio is a small city because most people know each other in Medina, Ohio. Well, LA Freenet is made up of many small cities that get together. We started the LA Freenet in the San Fernando Valley, uh, and we found that there were many communities within Los Angeles that want to interconnect, and we have helped provide the vehicle by which they can interconnect so that we've got seniors from all over the city who view this as a magic carpet. They can get out of their homes using this system and travel really around the world. We have uh, the Los Angeles County Medical Association using this system as a way for physicians to interact around the city and through our linkage to other free nets around the world. The Urban League is joining us to provide access to the greater Los Angeles area again through the LA Freenet and throughout the world. Blooming's main interest in the Freenet is in providing practical medical information. The hospital has a public access terminal and offers its patients clinics on how to access the Freenet. As you can see here on this screen, we have the description of breast cancer, 
We also have prognosis, we have staging of the disease, the treatment options, and so on. And it's, it's great reading information. The way the Cleveland Freenet really started was because Dr. Grundner and his colleagues discovered that there is a tremendous public desire for anonymously asked, professionally answered, free medical information. And that's what we're providing. The seniors in Los Angeles are also beginning to discover this dynamic new way to stay connected with their peers and the world, thanks to the enthusiasm and dedication of a few retired teachers. Well, Mel started earlier than I did because he retired two years before I did. He kept saying, come look at this, come look at that. And I said, when I retire, I will. And uh, so we both are, do, do quite a bit for the free net. Read our mail, do our do the red. I help with the registration, and uh, help with moderating the different special interest groups. You've created several. Uh huh. And uh, there's a food and a gardening that I've created, and um, I try to get them off to other people. We want as many people as possible to be helping. I think people feel much better when they're part of something, and so uh, as soon as one is created, I try to find someone else who'll take it over. I bought a computer when I was 72, and I bought it to edit a manuscript that my husband had left. And from that, I got on the LA Freenet. And the LA Freenet has such a wealth of information. You could spend hours just cyber surfing. It's wonderful. We're an intergenerational society, and years ago, Grandma and Grandpa lived with you so that you had an extended family. We want to move back to that and we can use a computer for just those things. While community computing provides access to local information, it can be used to reach other electronic services beyond the immediate community. Teachers like Zeta Evanson from Birmingham High School in Los Angeles are just beginning to see how Freenets can form a potent new educational tool. With the use of the LA Freenet, we can have right now, up-to-date, in-your-face news, so to speak. Um, for example, if I have to learn, uh, we talk about physics, I would send my students through the net, and they would learn more about what's happening now and what's being published now than from a textbook, which, which probably would have been written in, you know, in about five years, and the information is about 10 years old. So for us, this is really an instant information highway for my students. You want to check out like earthquakes from Caltech, you just type in five and return. Oh, wow. And it runs through Whoa. this list of earthquakes happening. And here it I guess is. I those are like the last earthquakes. Yeah, these are the last earthquakes. The major ones. Yeah. This is where we're going. Um, I would say that in the future, future, the teacher becomes a facilitator of knowledge rather than the person between the blackboard and the students. Right now, the teacher will stand back in the back of the classroom and facilitate the learning process, and I think that is very important. Schools, seniors, medical professionals, many people are beginning to see how this resource can improve life in their community. It's when the local populace buys into this and recognizes the power of access to information that this succeeds. In Battle Creek, Michigan, the Great Lakes Freenet has become the organization that is bringing all of the agencies in that town together. Government, schools, health centers, libraries are all working to find a way to get their information online. The Great Lakes Freenet has been one of the most effective economic development tools that this region, uh, Calhoun, Barrie, Branch Counties, the surrounding region, has seen uh, in a long time because it's a tremendous communication tool for us and information and communication are really the most valuable pieces we have when we look at trying to, to be successful with workforce development. That is attracting new companies to the region, that's retaining the companies that we have as they look at future expansion plans, and then developing the, the available workforce. Among the, the biggest, I think, win, winners in the situation are local community organizations and institutions because it provides a whole new medium for these organizations to speak to the community and for the community to speak back to them. We had one question that I, I can't imagine why someone asked it or what, how they even thought of it. They wanted to know how many people apply for marriage licenses and then actually get married and how many people apply for divorce or file for divorce and actually get divorced. And much to my surprise, we keep statistics like that. 
I was able to go to two different offices and get the information and provide it for them and whoever else was looking on the system. There is no way that I can imagine a 21st century that doesn't have community computer systems, just like our century had the free public library. I mean, I can't imagine that not happening. Who's going to do it? Who's going to help out? Who's going to join together to make public access community computing a reality? Now, my prediction is that, first of all, it's going to happen. There's no way that it's not going to happen. And secondly, is that community computer systems are going to have as great an impact on the 21st century as the public library had on our century. It's just a question of who and when.